Good evening. We are in Nashville. Um, you would never know by this painting. It looks like the painting in every other hotel. Um, it says nothing about where we are. <clears throat> we had an absolutely beautiful ride today. Um, and by beautiful, I mean we, you know, we sometimes you're in you're in an area of the country that um, you just know is a special place and. Um, and you're able to find roads to ride on um, that are really special and tell a particular story about an area. Because, um, you know, going down the freeway anywhere in any part of the world kind of sucks. But going on the, the old school two lane uh, roads throughout the country, it really gives you a completely different perspective. Um, when we left Kentucky this morning, we crossed into uh, Tennessee. Uh, about midway through our ride today and we arrived here in Nashville um, exactly 105 miles um, took us six and a half hours we had super cold temperatures it was 46 degrees you know we reckon that it was below 40 uh, at the speed we were riding um, and below 40 is pretty darn close to freezing it was cold man all day and like we, we were wet all day because it was raining on and off um, but you learn something about yourself and you learn something about the other people you're riding with and you learn something about the power of people working together um, when you go through things like this it's sort of easy to ride on a hot day in a sunny day in a day where you have a tailwind all day um, you know when you're up against it that's when you really learn a lot Ryan Kelly, who was our um, lady rider for the past week uh, or so, uh, today was her final day with us. She's gone back to work. She does um, massage and, 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 and teaches yoga uh, to the group Sugarland uh, for them and their crew. So she had to fly out today. Well, as we were in our final few kilometers of the ride today, uh, we were going up this monster climb, and it just it just like. The rollers kept hitting us all day, and we were sort of miserable at this point. And uh, we couldn't feel our legs anymore, they were so cold. And I said to her, um, you know, this really sucks. And we were laughing, and I said, but you know, it, this is nothing compared to what Shep, who's her little nephew, who's going through you know, leukemia treatment, what he's going through, is nothing compared to what Brock, John, uh, Bennett's son, went through with his cancer treatment. It's nothing compared to what Pablo went through. And um, that's a true statement. Um, it's also nothing compared to what our friend Carlos Santiago went through. Um, he's our dedication tonight. And um, those of you who've been following us for some time know that uh, he, he is, I don't want to say was, he is, uh, a very special person to me. He's a very special person to Joanne um, and, and so many of our friends in, in LA uh, who, who, who had gotten to know him over, over his uh, time at CHLA. Carlos' family are from Boston. There's, there's a crew of his family in um, California and he and his parents, uh, Tony and Sam, uh, lived in Hong Kong. Um, and that's where he was, where he was growing up um, when he was um, diagnosed with cancer. So he and his mom, Tony, would be living at the Ronald McDonald House behind CHLA, doing his treatment for a long time. He was diagnosed when he was four, and um, he passed away when he was eleven. And uh, and Sam, his father, would would uh, jet back and forth from Hong Kong, and this is the kind of thing that that um, people have to um, figure out when, when, when their child is going through cancer treatment. Like how do we, how does, you know, how do, how do the breadwinner or the breadwinners in the family still work? Because um, you need to work. Um, we got to know Carlo first when he was Pablo's roommate at CHLA and I saw his acoustic guitar uh, which was in a box, like something you'd buy at the store, and Adam Levine from Maroon 5 was on the box. It was like the Adam Levine model guitar. 
and I struck up a conversation with this dude, Carlo, uh, who was, was, as I recall, he was a, just about to turn nine, or maybe he was just nine, and it was like talking to like a mad scientist. He was so smart. He was not only smart, but he was so pointed in what he was saying, no matter what he was talking about. He was just, he was an incredibly, like, sort of overarching thinker. He would, he would think three steps down the conversation, and he would just go straight there. Um, he was like my brother Scott in that way, and so we. Um, we really fell in love with him, and I spent uh, as much time with him as I could, uh, and um, we've become good friends with his parents, and um, our friend James Valentine, uh, the guitar player from Maroon 5, um, um, had a very close relationship with Carlo, uh, taught him guitar uh, as part of his work at CHLA, and, and went far beyond that. Um, our friends, um, Adam and Jordy, who manage Maroon 5, um, had a very special place in their heart for Carlo. Adam uh, was one of Pablo's godfathers, if you will. I mean, he was, he was, Adam was one of the two people who encouraged me and Joanne to go on a date. Like, that's, that's how far back we go with Adam. And Adam was working in the Danger Bird office when, the Danger Bird office was our guest bedroom. And, um, and so this whole ball of wax for us all links up. And Carlo um, was just just really touched my heart. Those of you who have been have been with us for some time know that um, last year, uh, right before I left LA, we did a press conference at CHLA. Vince Neal and I did a press conference to announce um, some work we were doing together. And Carlo was there. He came down and he was wearing his yellow Livestrong t-shirt and he brought his acoustic guitar and Vince is, um, Vince is like a, uh, he's like a, you know what Vince is like, he's like a rocker dude and he's sort of like wears sunglasses during the day uh, and doesn't take them off when he's indoors, he's like a rocker dude. When he saw Carlo walking with an acoustic guitar and when he saw Carlo playing Stairway to Heaven, like the hard way, he just turned, Vince turned into a kid. It was like incredible. And that's the power uh, and the beauty of Carlo for me um, as his friend. It was just his, his incredible um, kidness. And, and he would, he would, I remember going to see him in the hospital many times and he, um, he, um, would be very sick sometimes, um, and sometimes he wouldn't be, but I remember one time I went in, he was very, very sick, and he um, was just running, um, he sort of had the run of the room, he was talking to his dad, and I forgot what he was talking about, he, he corrected his dad on something, and, and, and we just sat there and laughed, like, you know, this little boy, he, he must have been on some sort of a painkiller intravenous lane, so he was pretty, he was pretty, you know, out there, um, but he was still so sharp in the midst of it all, and um, he just had a profound effect, and continues to have a profound effect on me. Um, I, I will admit that um, it was hard for me to not go and see him, there was part of me that wanted to keep going back to the hospital. Um, and, 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 and it was part of me that really enjoyed um, being invited to come and see him um, because there was a connection f to Pablo in those rooms. Uh, Pablo, like Carlo, uh, you know, lived in every room in the cancer ward at CHLA and some multiple times. Um, Carlo was there for a much longer time. Um, and so, yes, it was hard to go into the room that Pablo lived in for five weeks after his one of his surgeries. But on the other hand, it also allowed me to go back there um, with my heart open for somebody else and to get out of my own um, skin and my own story and to be there with, with, my, with my friend Carlo, who himself had a connection to Pablo. Um, I don't know, some, 
some people think I'm crazy to ever go back in these hospitals. And for me, uh, I, I, it allows me to have a connection um, to Pablo. And, and, and um, for me, as one of Pablo's parents, I sort of feel like my work with the Pablo Foundation allows me to continue parenting my son. That's one of the ways I look at it, and and my connection with Carlo was certainly was certainly um, wrapped up in that. Um, not that he needed another parent, but I, I was um, I was just drawn to him because he reminded me of Pablo, and they knew each other, and they were both very um, curious, very well spoken little dudes. Carlo um, will have an effect on my life for as long as I live. I can tell you that for as long as he fought cancer and fought it and fought it and fought it, when he died, um, I, I did not, um, I did not understand. You know, I just didn't, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it when my own son died. It's different for me when someone else's child dies, uh, who I'm close with. It's, it, 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 it's a different thing. Um, and Carlo's absence physically in this world is very, um, very tough for me. I think about him every day, and I look at photos of he and I every day in my iPhoto. I look through my iPhoto all the time. He was just, uh, you know, I just figured this out. I mean, I there were things about Carlo because he was older than Pablo that I that I hoped Pablo would have been able to do. I hoped that Pablo would have um, gotten excited at some point to pick up his guitar that he, that we gave him as a gift and, and to actually learn how to play a song. Um, and um, I had hoped that Pablo had become deeply impassioned about books and, and facts and, um, and music itself. And uh, most of all, I just wanted Pablo to make it and I wanted Carlo to make it. And when I think of research, and when I think of what we're doing out here on our bikes and why we're doing it, it's very easy for me to understand that um, if we at the Pablo Foundation can can fund uh, you know a, a, a microscopic growth um, in cancer treatment um, or, or or the microscopic change in the treatment regimen that will allow a child's body to, to be less scathed by the treatment. That's a life's work right there. And that can help little boys like Pablo and Carlo. Um, my friend Carlo um, is a boy who knew Pablo across America. Um, he wore his Pablo t-shirt all the time. We talked about cycling all the time. Um, his parents uh, continue to be our friends. They were just over at our office uh, uh, six weeks ago when they were in town. We care for them deeply. Um, we constantly uh, bump into each other on Facebook and um, we have, we have uh, a conversation with them about the loss of our sons that is, is, is um, comforting to both sets of parents. Um, there's a shorthand that you get into when you're talking to another parent or or another set of parents who lost a child. When you bring it right right into focus and, and, and you're talking to two people who were sitting on the other side of a dividing curtain in a hospital room uh, as roommates, and we and, and Dr. Leo Mascarenas, who, who was Pablo's oncologist, was also Carlos. And so we are people who are two halves of the same, of the same fruit. Um, there is a shorthand between, between these, these two sets of parents that, 
that is um, very unique in our lives and uh, we wish none of us knew anything about pediatric cancer. We wish our kids were in school in LA and Hong Kong and we didn't even know each other. There's no doubt about that. Um, I can tell you that I love Carlos Santiago. Um, he, he, his spirit is alive in me um, and, and I will dedicate my night and our night to him here and um, I will remember him fondly and, and I, um, I'm not sad when I think of Carlo, I think, I think I'm, I'm, I wish he was here, I'm sad that he's not here, but there's so much, I have so many great memories with him that I, um, I just remember those memories right, right now, that's where I'm at, and um, I wish he was here to tell you, you've seen videos of him, there's plenty of videos of him on, on the blog, and photos, he's just, he was a great kid, so, on behalf of, of, of me, and Joanne, and everybody at Danger Road who got to know him, and everybody at the Pablo Foundation, all of our friends, um, who, who knew him, I want to say to, um, Carlo, to Carlo's spirit, um, we love you, we miss you, and to Sam and Tony in Hong Kong, we love you guys, we miss you too, being that you're half a world away, and we're looking forward to seeing you soon, so see you later.